I've been working in and around Detroit for nearly 35 years. Um, I've produced 500 posters, uh, if not more, for different bands, venues, concerts, events, uh, just about anything that seems to be going on. I've always been a huge Patti Smith fan. And uh, when Fred Smith, her husband, passed away, she kind of got out and started playing again. So I did her first poster uh, when she played at the Ark in Ann Arbor. And then from that, I did a few merchandise pieces for her. Uh, her tour manager, who I got to be good friends with, uh, asked me if I'd be interested in coming to Europe with him. So I was kind of on the fence about it. Um, um, because I just didn't want to be in the way. You know, I know what Turing's kind of like. I didn't want to get in her way. Um, but a good friend of mine out in California said, well, you know, in 20 years, what are you going to remember? The reason that, that you did go to Europe with Patti Smith Band or the, the reason that you didn't go? So that kind of prompted me into going. So I, I went to, to Europe with them and uh, went, did five dates with them. I think Slovenia, Austria, uh, Germany. I can't remember. I have, a, I have pictures of all this stuff, but it was... Uh, so, so Patti Smith stuff was always kind of important to me. And, oh, and then I did her closing show at CBGB's. She was the last person to play at CBGB's the night they closed. So I did a poster for that event. The amount of money that I was paid to do a poster would not even begin to cover the silk screening process. I mean, there's ink involved, there's labor, paper. So I had to figure out a way to make it pay for itself. So... And, and early on, the bands would flip a little bit of money. The promoter would flip a little bit of money. Um, so ultimately, I ended up having to sell posters. Um, and I think I just got lucky time-wise, timing with, because they started gaining popularity, and there were f maybe four or five people around the country that were doing them. And uh, so I was able to, you know, with each poster I did, I saw a little profit. When I'm making a poster for somebody is, uh, well, let me preface that by saying one of the nice things about doing the concert posters was I had 90, 98% total control and freedom to do what I wanted to do. I kind of knew what my boundaries were, and I would just be real careful about, you know, that I was going to do something good. If we did a big poster, the record stores wouldn't put them in a window, say 18 by 24 or bigger because they said it would take up too much window space and cover up other stuff. So I kind of standardized the size to fit so I could fit two posters and handbills to a sheet. So my, all of a sudden my printing costs were cut in half. I'm getting two posters for the price of one. And I, I made them that size so they could go on telephone poles and stuff like that. Now, a lot of cities have ordinances against that stuff. Um, so they, they didn't, but, but they were small enough that they could, the stores could put them and use them in the window and use them for what the intent was to, to, to advertise. I, I think my mentors in the arts or, or, or influences or support really comes from my mom. I mean, when I was a little kid, she would take me to the DIA. She'd take all my brothers and sisters. I was the only one that kind of gravitated towards the arts, but... But I remember that. And we'd go every Saturday and they'd have workshops that we'd, for kids that we would do. Well, bef before I started doing po posters, I was painting. The posters just kind of started out as a creative outlet. And what I had no idea where it was going, it was going to, and it lasted nearly 20 years. So I think because of the changes in the whole industry and the reasons people do posters, I just kind of burned out on them. I got tired, and so I started painting again. And I've always painted a little bit throughout that process, but not, you know, when I was doing the posters, I would, whether consciously or subconsciously, be aware of that I can't do anything offensive to the band. The public is going to see this stuff, so I've got to keep within certain guidelines that, that I impose myself. But, but with the paintings, I can do, if nobody likes my paintings, I don't care if they... If they love them, you know, I don't care. It just, it's just, it's what I like to do. So, so I'd been painting these really large paintings, but technically they weren't right. So I started looking around my studio, and I've got all this stuff lying around here. So I started actually setting up these still lifes and lighting them and taking photographs of them, and, and that's what I've been painting. And it, it's forcing me to look at, and I try to put metal, glass, plastic, different surfaces in there. And there's a there's kind of a theme to some of them. There's always like either some kind of 
gun or drug related or or just something different involved. So a buddy of mine calls them punk rock still lifes. I mean, I, I never owned uh, Lamborghinis or, um, but you know, I paid my bills. Uh, yeah, 